in college or we need to send you back to grade school. Oh my God. Okay? <laughs> and so first we need to determine what the differences is, what the difference differences are. What is the difference between the way in which we expect you to learn in grade school versus the way we are expecting you to grow into learning in college? So like the idea is in college when you get a four year degree, what does that mean versus a high school diploma for people? Like, give me an example of what you learned in grade school. The basics and fundamentals. Uh, two plus two. Two plus two is four. four. And that, so what is so? And what else? Like, what is that an multiplication. example? Multiplication. Multiplication. Yeah. What, what What were you doing with multiplication? Just, Just multiplying numbers. How to do it? Yeah, but how? Like, how are you learning it? Memorization. Oh, memorization. memorization, right? So, what yes. is memorization? What type of learning is memorization? It's a repetition, it's concrete, right? There we go. So then what kind of learning are we learning in college? Abstract. Abstract, which means what? Figure things out for yourself. Figure things out for yourself, right? We give you one idea over here, I'll give you another idea over here, and then you come up with your own conclusion at the end. Right? So the difference between a, a four-year degree in college and a high school diploma or GED, as adults, right? Someone with a GED is probably not going to be in the employer's mind, able to think outside the box and fix problems. Whereas when you apply for a job, they may not care what your degree is in, they care that you've got a four year degree. Because here at college, they're assuming you've learned how to think abstract, right? How to, how to take a problem, here's a list of what you need to do, now make this list of what you need to do better. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna test this today, okay? Uh, you might not be able to answer the question because you already have prior knowledge to what we're about to do. Okay, start the, day, start the day out the same way every single time. You can't sail directly into the wind. When you're sailing directly into the wind, that's said to be in irons, or head to wind. Stop. Down. Down. Okay? So when we're into the wind in the no-go zone, we're head to wind or in irons. Every other angle besides in the no-go zone is a point of sail, right? They're an angle. There are three main points of sail, close hauled, reaching, and running. Close hauled is very defined, right? Sailing as close to the wind as possible with our sails trimmed in as close as possible, okay? Um, running is very defined, okay? Dead downwind, 180 degrees, sails all the way up, okay? In fact, this is called wing on wing, right? When the jib is on one side and the main is on the other. So again, close hauled, the sailing as close to the wind as possible, where our sail is trimmed in as close as possible. Running, sails all the way out, wind 180 degrees, okay? Everything in between a run and close haul is a reach. There are three reaches. Close reach, beam reach, and broad reach. Beam reach, again, is very defined. 90 degrees to the wind, sails halfway up, okay? If you're sailing one degree less than a beam reach, all the way up to one degree more than close hauled, that is close reaching, right? You're at a close angle to the wind. If you're sailing one degree more than a beam reach, all the way down to one degree less than running, you're now at a broad angle or broad reaching, right? When we turn towards the wind, that's called what? You remember? You can as well. What's that? When you turn towards the wind, what's that called? Yeah. Yep. So then when we turn away from the wind, that's called? Falling off. Falling off, right? When the bow crosses the wind, that's called? Tacking, right? Tacking when the bow crosses the wind. And then when the stern crosses the wind, that's called? Okay, so, has anyone heard of the physicist Bernoulli? No? Yeah, kind of. What do you think Bernoulli is? You know? I know he like, did something with aerodynamics and buoyancy. Yes, so Bernoulli was a, was a um, physicist and mathematician, came up with Bernoulli's principle of lift, okay? And this is how an airplane flies, 
Do you have an airplane wing? Right? Air travels further and faster over the top than it does over the bottom. Okay? What that means is as the air is falling further and faster over the top than it does on the bottom, if I were to take a one by one square and physically count the number of air molecules within that square, on the top there would be less molecules in that square, on the bottom there will be more molecules in that square. Does that make sense? So what that means is we have a negative pressure on top, a positive pressure on the bottom, and the airplane wing will go towards the negative pressure. Does that make sense? Okay. And we can, we can um, show that concept by blowing air over the top of a piece of paper. When I blow air over the top of a piece of paper, I'm accelerating the air over the top of the foil. Right? So I'm going to create a negative pressure by blowing the air molecules out of the way, therefore creating positive pressure on the bottom, and the piece of paper will defy gravity. See that? See how it li like, literally lifts up um, for uh, defying gravity because I'm creating a negative pressure on top and a positive pressure on the bottom. Okay? This same concept applies to sailboats. Okay? When the air is traveling further and faster along the leeward side of the sail than it does across the windward side, we have a negative pressure. Okay? So we have a negative pressure on the leeward side, which in turn creates a positive pressure on the windward side. Right? So if this was like an airplane, which way would that sailboat go? Toward the negative pressure, right? What stops, I and mean, that's actually leeward, right? It would slide to leeward. What stops the boat sliding to leeward? The keel, right? The keel or centerboard or daggerboard creates that lateral resistance to stop the boat from sliding sideways. Okay? So, who can tell me what the most, remember what the most aerodynamic shape there is? Do you remember? So, give me, an aer give me some shapes. What's an aerodynamic shape? Circle. Circle shape? What else? You know, circle or sphere. <laughs> All right. What else? Those are different. Um, triangle. Triangle. Cylinder. Cylinder. Um, Can we get even more aerodynamic or hydrodynamic by adding a couple of shapes together? A teardrop. A teardrop. <laughs> or an ice cream cone. Right? So in fact, this would be your most aero or hydrodynamic shape there is. Right? Kind of like an ice cream cone, kind of like a triangle and a circle together. In fact, if we go look at the keel out there, right, this is the shape of what the keel looks like. Okay? This is the bow. This is the stern. Right? So when Bernoulli's pencil of lift takes place, and we've got a negative pressure to leeward and a positive pressure to windward, and the boat wants to slide sideways, we put sideways pressure on this force, like this. This shape is going to turn that sideways force into forward motion because of the shape. Okay? It's kind of like a watermelon seed. If I were to pinch this on either side, it's going to shoot in that direction. And that's what we're doing with the keel. We put that sideways pressure on this shape. This shape wants to go that way. Okay? This is why the keel is shaped this way, right? So, when we have this negative pressure to leeward and a positive pressure to windward, the boat would essentially slide to leeward, right? As the boat, but be, what stops the boat from sliding to leeward is the keel. The keel is shaped in this direction this shape, which then turns that sideways force into forward motion. So the boat turns this sideways force into forward motion. Okay? 
Incidentally, can you tell me what the difference between your course sailed and the course actually steered is? So you've got, you, we were, you have to turn a little more this way. You have to turn a little bit more this way, right? Because the boat's sliding to leeward. What is that called when the boat slides to leeward? Lee something. Partially. Not hardly. Uh, Lee what? Lee, leeway. Lee, W, leeway. Remember leeway? Uh, yeah. Leeway, right? So leeway is the boat sliding to leeward, right? And the keel creates lateral resistance to reduce leeway, right? And by reducing leeway, it turns out lateral force into forward motion, right? So when the boat heels over, the keel is less effective, you have more leeway. You have more slippage to leeward. When the boat's more vertical, you have more lateral resistance. You have less leeway, right? And the boat's able to sail better at a point. Okay? So back to this negative pressure, positive pressure. Boat sliding to leeward. The keel prevents that leeway from happening. It turns out leeway, that leeward motion into forward motion. When we're sailing upwind, you know, close haul or close reaching, we're going to now say we're being pulled by the wind. Okay? Downwind sailing. Broad reach, running, sailing by the lee. When we're sailing downwind, okay, there's no physics involved. We're just catching as much air as possible and being pushed downwind. Okay? That's why we want to get the sails out as far as we can so we can catch as much air as we can. Does that make sense? Is there anyone kite board here? Beam reach. Beam reach is going to be your most efficient or fastest point of sail. Here we're both being pushed by the wind as well as being pulled. Okay? So we get the pull by getting the negative pressure on this side, the positive pressure on that side. We're getting the push because the wind is still getting pushed into the sails. The keel is still creating that lateral resistance so we don't go to leeward. And that lateral resistance get, gets transferred into forward motion. Does that make sense? So now when we're out there sailing, I'm going to ask you three questions, right? First, I'm going to ask, what tack are we on? What is that referring to? Which tack are you on? Yeah. Which is going to be what? What are your two options? Port or starboard. Port or starboard. Port tack or starboard tack, right? The next question I'm going to ask you is, what point of sail are we on? Right? Close hauled, close reaching, beam reaching, broad reaching, running. Now I'm going to ask you, what mode are we in? Are we in pull mode? Are we being pulled upwind? Are we in push mode, being pushed downwind? Or are you in push pull, your most efficient point of sail? Does that make sense? So pull mode, push mode, or push pull. Okay? So, along with Bernoulli's principle of lift, we have these things called telltales. And what these telltales do is they tell a tale of smooth airflow. Okay? These telltales only work when we're being pulled by the wind. When are we being pulled? What part of sails are we being pulled? Close, close reaching. Close reaching and close hold. Yep, exactly. So both of them, right? So that's the only time these telltales work, when we're being pulled by the wind. Okay? And what they do is they tell a tale of smooth airflow. When both telltales are streaming straight back, they're telling you that the jib or your sail is trimmed properly for the angle you are to the wind. Does that make sense? If your leeward telltale is tattling, it's going up, it's going down, it's going in circles, it's doing everything but going straight back, it's telling you one of two things. One, you either need to ease the sail out towards the tattling telltale, or two, push the tiller towards the tattling telltale and head up. Okay? Conversely, if your windward telltale is tattling or is stalling, it's going up, it's going down, it's going in circles, but it's not going straight back. Right? It's telling you that the air is stalled on the windward side. You can do one of two things. You can A, pull the sail in towards the tattling telltale, or B, pull the tiller towards the tattling telltale and fall off. Here's your million dollar question, which you can't answer, okay? How do you know whether to adjust the sail or the telltale? Okay, well, close hauled is everything pulled in because of how close you are to the wind. Close reach is like a little bit less. Then 
it's not pulled in as much. You have a little bit more leeway. And and is is, is close hauled very is it like is close reach very closely defined? No. No. Right. That's why they're interchangeable, sort of. Right. Yeah. So like if close hauled is this right here, it sails all the way in, sails close as much as possible. Close reach is one degree less than that. So it could be like forty six. Could be fifty five. Could be sixty three. Could be seventy two. Could be eighty one. Could be eighty five. Could be eighty nine. Those are all angles of close reach. Wouldn't it be prudent that you might need different angles of sail trim for different angles to the wind? Mm -hmm. So would you adjust the tiller? No. no, you would adjust the sail because the angle is dictated based on the angle of the sail that you're sailing for the wind. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Close haul is very defined. As close to the wind as possible. Yeah, you're just agreeing now. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> close haul is very important, right? It's very defined. Close to when as possible, yes. sales trimmed in as close as possible. That's where I get the tiller. That's so why I'm it's the tiller. Off. Anything else is you can use. Close it. reach is, I'm falling off to a close reach, I'm going to sail to a specific destination, a buoy, and it, that buoy happens to be at 47 degrees. Mm -hmm. Or another buoy that we're going to sail fall off to a close reach, and it's at 55 degrees. Mm -hmm. So your jib trim at 46 degrees is going to be different than your jib trim at, 45, at, at 55. As 63, right? It's going to be different. 77 is going to be different than 47, right? So you need to adjust the jib sheet accordingly, right? So when we talk about health sailors here, right? This is your new definition of close hull. Sails trimmed in as close as possible, both telltales streaming straight back, right? And who's responsible for those telltales at, at close hull? The skipper or the jib trim? The skipper. No, the skipper. The skipper, right? Right. At a close reach, the skipper will say falling off to a close reach or heading up to a close reach. Who is responsible for those telltales? The jib trim. The jib trim, right? The skipper is going to turn to where they want to go at a close reach, and now we need to set the sails to that angle. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. 